so let's go ahead and just get started. So one of the things I want to talk about uh, in this is that you make sure that you and everybody that's listening is aware. To me, there's essentially there's three different kinds of landing pages. So as you know, a landing page is something where somebody lands on something. You're going to collect their information for whatever they, you know whatever information that you're going to be collecting. And then uh, you might be giving them away something for free, like say schedule an appointment, or you're gonna have like here's a free gift, here's a free uh, ebook, or here's you know, whatever it is that you're doing. Now, what I've noticed is that when you're doing a landing page, um, it is always good to always give them something for free, whatever it is, because um, that's, that's gonna be their initial contact. Um, and so like in your business, like, you know, what can you give away for free? Maybe it's how to do something, it's not like a do it yourself, or it could be a, an initial consultation where, you know, you can, they can come, you can come up to them, they come to you, you meet on Zoom, you know, you know what, whatever it is that you want to be doing. But it, you definitely want it to be something where you're giving something away for free in exchange for their contact information. Now, when you're, uh, when you get their contact information, um, that way, now you have now you usually will have a, at least their email. Uh, one of the things you may do, depending on how valuable the gift you're giving away, you may want them to double opt in. And uh, what that basically means is they'll go to your your landing page, they'll put in their email, they'll put in the hit the button, like subscribe button or whatever it is, and then they'll get another email uh, that they're going to have to click yes, this is me. So that, that that's a call, a double opt in. Uh, that's always so is, is that how do you automate that are you building all that in your crm you're building all of that in your process um, and i am definitely going over that here in, in, in a little bit um and but yes it is going to be done in your crm so assuming your landing page well the first thing you got to figure out is how is your landing page going to uh, connect to your crm because that's the, that's to me one of the most important things is if you're using a third page website like this and let's say you're using MailChimp or Constant Contacts or AWeber or something like that. Like, how does that landing page now contact your your CRM? And then, what is the process that you're going to be uh, using there? The 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 one that I use and what I'm going to be probably showing you the most on today is something known as Keep. That's who I use, and that's where I'm going to be, I'm going to be showing you the the actual process inside of Keep. Now, for yourself. Depending on which landing page that you have and which email campaign, you will have to look at how they're integrated so you can do something similar. So it's going to, it's going to most likely be visually different, but the process, the, the idea is still going to be the same. The concept is still going to be the same. Mm -hmm. um, so for, uh, as an example, let me go ahead and go to one of my, one of, one of my landing pages. Now I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to actually go to what is known as a, um, um, a subdomain. So I'm put instead of putting it after my website at like uh, optimalformsacademy.org forward slash then some subfolder which will redirect to the landing page. I'm going to do this right now as a subdomain. I, I, you can do it either way. It doesn't matter. They basically they do the same thing. So I'm going to put a, a, up here lmg one dot that my website optimalformsacademy.org. I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter. So what that does is now it's going to go to this landing page. The landing page uh, um, may ha have the very top up here, may have your um, your logo and maybe your, your um, what is that called, your, your tagline, um, maybe up there just so, so your your identity is being is, is being connected to, uh, together. And then up here somewhere at the top, you either want to have like an image of what you're, what you're giving away for, for free or maybe some video or something like this. It's got to be something that's going to be visually uh, pleasing. As you can see here, I'm just going to collect their email and then hit the, the download button. So th this is an example of a, a relatively short landing page. And when they hit download, does it actually download something? No, th this one actually is going to uh, take, them, take them to what's called a thank you page or the next step in this uh, in this process. However, they'll get an email, an automated email saying, hey, uh, thank you for, congratulations, you now have the four types of lead magnets. And that way they can click on that inside the email and that will take them to wherever you have your download. Now, some people will go here and they will actually, when you go to the thank you page, they'll have the downloadable on the thank you page. I have done that in the, in the past. I probably would not advise it um, for, for a couple of reasons. Reason number one is if they're going to their email, that's if they entered an incorrect email, they're not getting the delete memory, so therefore it's a way to at least verify their email without them actually 
doing a double opt in. Secondly, if they get the email, they're more than likely they're going to retain that email. Then they're going to say, oh, this goes to a thank you page, and then they said they got distracted and they went away. Like, well, now, they're, now, now they've lost it. Mm -hmm. So this is always, in my opinion, better to have the, uh, that free item that you're going to be getting inside their email. Now, will they send it to other people to download it? Because it's going to be a free download, um, so unless you have a login site, you know, a secured site, um, where you have to log in to get it. Somebody else would get it for free, and oh well, you're not going to be able to track that. In most cases, there are ways to get around that. Too. <laughs> um, so, so I'm going to go ahead and, and show you what this looks like now. Um, when I'm using uh, Keep, I'm going to go ahead and sign into Keep just so you can see what this looks like. Now I am an affiliate with uh, with Keep, so if this is something that you want to talk about on um, this, we can set up a, a, a time to talk. Um, because I, I, what I can do here, this is a, this account here, the TR five one six. That's my um, account that I use. This one above, the GTS seven eight six, the OPE sandbox. That if you were if you were to sign up, say through me, I can throw in landing pages and things like that inside the sandbox, and you get them automatically. So that's you know, that's the, that's why I have two different accounts here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into my uh, into my account, and I'm going to look up this one that was for the uh, this uh, lead magnet generator uh, one. Now, in this particular case, when they put in their email, in this case, I'm actually I'm not giving I'm not going to go to a thank you page. I can go to another uh, another page. Now that page could be on my website, which could be a thank you page, or it could be anything else. Uh, in this particular case, this is a lead magnet, so they can go and buy another program. So that's going to go to another landing page. So it's, 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 it's a, it's a multi-step process. So when you're looking at building your landing pages, you want to look at you know you know how many steps are going to be in that process, and if there's any steps that require somebody to put in their credit card information because they're buying something, then you also got to uh, keep that in mind as well. So it can get fairly convoluted depending on how many steps are in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and go in into here and go under um, um, automations, go under advanced, and let's go ahead and go to the LMG funnel. Okay. Now this, my landing pages, my CRM, my checkout forms are all in one location. So there is no integration going outside. The only integration that I have going outside is uh, is Keep does not process their uh, credit card information. It processes it through either PayPal or Stripe. Okay, and there's a few of those that, that if you've got accounts with you can use those as well. So the only thing that is not done is the actual um, uh, is is the actual processing the credit card. But everything else is through my website or through uh, this CRM. That's that's why I like it because everything is integrated uh, inside of itself. So, so here is uh, you can see here I I labeled this as a lead magnet landing page, this is LMG1, so this, this is the actual landing, so I can actually know which one I can go to. You will see I have more than one as well, and I'll go into that in a moment. So let's go ahead and open that up. Now with the landing pages, there's essentially, there's three different kinds of landing pages. This is um, basically uh, uh, a shorter uh, page is not a, uh, what I would sometimes call a long form. You'll see that the scroll bar is very low, low on, this, on the right hand side here. So technically this would be called a squeeze page. A squeeze page is usually a very short landing page. A regular landing page can also be looked at as something that's called long form, which can have a whole bunch of uh, additional information like what are the features of the course, what are some testimonials, what are, you know, I mean, it can be, they can get, it can get pretty long. Is one better than the other? It depends, you have to test those out. Because sometimes having the long form, people are going to prefer that one um, because they want to get more information. And sometimes they're like, hey, I just got this thing here. Uh, it's, it, this, uh, I know you need this. I'm just going to put uh, it out. Is there a way for doing that A-B testing in Keep? Um, yes. Well, you, you can do it in Keep by creating the different landing page sequences. That's why I have, you see I have more than one. And then I'm, you know, like it says, I'm doing Facebook ad, then I'm testing like half of them are going to one landing page, and one half is going to the other landing page, which one is converting better. That's how you test. Okay. So, um, and that's going to be kind of the topic of next week is, is oh, Facebook okay. ads. Nice. <laughs> like, if, I'm, if I'm talking about this, the Facebook ad has to come next. <laughs> um, is that the main way for you to drive? Is that 
you're sending people uh, to your landing page on Facebook. That's how I'm doing it as far as I, I'm getting leads because this is all part of lead generation. Now, for an example, if you were to go to Optimal for the, the top one up there, the four slash strategy, which is just do a one hour strategy call, that has its own landing page. So I'm, I may have, um, or actually, no, that, that actually goes to my schedule. But I, I may have uh, a create you know a landing page for say for a LinkedIn profile. Say, hey, go in here to find out more. You read more about the, you land on the landing page. You want to do more. You put in your email. All of a sudden, you're now on my schedule, and now you just you, know, you put in the thing. Or I have to go directly to the schedule because I want to get your information anyway. Yeah. And does it does it work? I mean, do you get how many leads do you usually get from an ad? Like, uh, I've been testing that. Um, gosh, I it. like. That's one thing I don't like about this room. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, I get decent ads, because um, like what I was talking about earlier, uh, and during the lead generation phase of your, of your process, there's three steps, so there's target, attract, and convert. Target is like, who is my ideal client? Who do I want to be uh, targeting? So you're not wasting money trying to, you know, going after the wrong people. Then once you know who your target is, let's say you're doing a Facebook ad, you may, uh, you, you may say, well, I'm looking for, let's say in your case, I'm looking for homeowners, okay? People that own houses, okay? Um, now, what, are, what, what age groups are they? Are you, are you targeting 18 year olds? Most likely not, it's gonna be a waste of time and money. Number one, because 18 year olds are lying on Facebook, and then number two, you know, they're not gonna be helpful. Yeah. yeah, so I've got, assuming I've got the target market identified, mm -hmm. then, you have to attract. So, what are you doing? I mean, what terminology are they using, and how, you know, how are you going to attract them to come to you? So, it's. I mean, yeah, it has to be something and that's, that's just going to be kind of guessing and stuff. guessing and, and trial and error, uh, and, and and looking at your competitors. What are they doing? And then one good thing about LinkedIn and Facebook and those is, for an example, um, you you look at somebody else's post is doing something very similar to you and see how many likes they have, and, and so, okay, or likes or comments or shares, you know, whatever they have, look at their comments and they have comments and see, you know, are they positive or negative or, you know, like, do get a real job, you know, something like that. Um, Cause I mean, I, I see it all the time. I'm, so I'm, how did, okay, so like on the, the looking at competitors' comments and posts and stuff like that, how are those, how does that get tied into this, like, well, we, you, your we, landing page, right? One thing is like the interaction. What, the what, it's the interaction, but you also want to see what's working. What are other people that are doing that? So you're not just reinventing the wheel from scratch. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you want to see what's working with them. Um, I, I may even look at what colors are they using. You know, what, you know, what uh, uh, terminology are they using? Sometimes I would actually sign up to their uh, to their free lead night just to see what their content looks like. See how many uh, how many emails that they're sending. And I mean, I, I can't I can't see what's going on on their end, obviously, because that's going to be a private. But at least you can, think, you can start looking at, is this compelling? So this is this is this something that I can start doing myself. Like when I'm doing landing pages, um, I, I do alternate between uh, short form and long, and long form. Um, you know, as I said, I just want to see what's working. Now, uh, when I'm creating these, because uh, I mean, you have these, the, these different sections, one of the things you always want to make sure you do is you have this, the contact them, somewhere at the very top. Um, in, in the newspaper industry, there's this thing called uh, above the fold. Okay, and you know what that means, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so it's on the front page, but it's the top half. Below the fold would be the bottom, so one just picks it and does whatever. So, you want to have this, uh, your above the fold uh, piece on your landing page, to be this is the only thing that they're going to see. So, if you've got this uh, email and download now, so uh, way down here, they may never go down there. Yeah. And, and one of the things I, and, uh, no, I'm not going to say it, um, but you, you always want to make sure that, you know, whenever you, you know, if you're giving away something for free, that it is something that they are going to value and make sure that it is good and make sure you test it. I mean, I've seen too many times where I go to somebody's thing on Facebook and they're saying, your link isn't working. I mean, well, now you're wasting all of this money to get people to go to the landing page and you ain't got landing page not even working to begin with. So you always want to make sure you, uh, that you test it. Now, one thing I personally do is I have three different emails. So I'm constantly switching back and forth in my emails as, to, you know, as, as I'm testing. And in my CRM, uh, if I'm tagging myself, which you know, which may uh, you know, give myself a tag inside the CRM, which is you know, gives me a, a label, 
and that label is usually how to get down the uh, lead magnets. If I'm testing, I'll go into my CRM, delete that tag, delete, delete that label, and then I'll be like, I'm a virgin again, I'm, I'm fresh, and, and I'm going through. So I like doing that. That way I know I can check to see what, what's going on uh, in that process to make sure that um, if somebody's going to be falling out or if there's an issue on my side. Yeah, so. that makes sense. Yeah, test it out, please. Make yourself the user. Yeah, maybe, so you know, cause you know, cause you'll see what it looks like from your perspective, and you see what it looks like, like what it's supposed to look like from their perspective, which is the kind of test characters like that. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, there's just so many times that people don't test that. And I mean, like for an example, I was talking to another uh, client of mine uh, a couple of days ago, and he was talking about uh, creating a webinar. And so he's going to record it on, pre record it on Zoom, and then he's going to uh, have it go and upload. I said, you know, I said, make sure that if you do that, that you test the audio. Because I've, I've done where I'm, you know, I'm recording a program into Zoom, and I'm just doing the screen record, and then the audio was, was crap. I mean, I mean, I never even unplugged the microphone or even stopped the Zoom session. I just stopped recording and started another recording. And that recording, the audio was horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I didn't hear myself. So just make sure that if you do and I've even done programs where the audio is uh, about, there's like maybe a 30 minute uh, recording and that 20 minute mark is bad, sound is bad. Like, I don't know if it's my microphone, if it's Zoom, if it's down, if it's the video editing sound, I, I don't know. So like, make sure you test your, your audience if you're gonna be recording like that. Um, so that's, that is just a side note. So in this particular case, um, so when you're dealing with landing pages, uh, there's always gonna only be one call to action on that landing page. This is why you cannot have this as a web page. Because if you have menu, home, and all the stuff across the top, now you're just giving them more call to actions. So on, on a landing page, the, the only thing that they can do is, add, is that one thing. And when you're doing your landing page, you always also want to think about what is their next step in the process. So it, I'm going to show you how you do this and keep. Um, so if I go over here, where I said hit pay, or if I go here, and says I hit email, and it's, uh, and it's you know, there, I, I added other contact fields as you can see, add phone number, fax number, whatever, it doesn't matter what I, what, what I had. But if I scroll down and it goes to redirect options, it says here, this is actually going to go to another URL. So it's not going to a, uh, a thank you page. If it did go to a thank you page, you know, if I were to go here, oops, I'll put that, yeah. Control C because I'm, I'm about to make a change. I want to make sure I don't set it by accident. Um, I can basically I can go to a uh, link to a URL or another page in the funnel. So if I hit another page in the funnel, there's only the thank you page. So right now, if they were to, if I were to save this, they're going to go to the thank you page. Um, so it's not, it's not even a finished thank you page because I'm not using it. Mm -hmm. But this is what the, this would be the next thing that the user uh, would have seen. But I'm, I'm actually I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to the index and I'm going to make sure. Okay, so it's safe. Um, so I, I, in this case, I would just hit continue, and in this case, I republish. Now, what we talked about last week about subdomains. Now, if you're using Keep this uh, and this version of Keep, this version of a landing page, one of the things that you may want to uh, start doing, um, and if you have another landing page builder, is that you you would want your um, URL somewhere inside the uh, um, inside the name of the landing page. So right now, this is what the this is the URL for the landing page. Normally, I, I would copy this and save it to my computer, onto a spreadsheet on my computer. Now, if you're doing Facebook ads, I don't know about LinkedIn, but Facebook ads, and I wouldn't even say Google ads, is that you want to set up subdomains. So this is, the, I went there and, and I created this .org, uh, LMG one. so now if they were to go to this link here, that, that, that subdomain, and you do that through your um, hosting company for your, uh, like, I use Cypher, I don't know, do that, whatever. You'll build that subdomain, and then that will take them to here. The reason being, if you're on uh, Facebook and everything to the left of that cursor there, because that just says active, anything to the left of that uh, uh, pointer there, 
is uh, that's that's showing my domain. So when I'm running a Facebook ad and, and a Facebook ad is going to my domain, that makes that my Facebook ad a lot more legitimate. It's not going to some random site. Mm -hmm. So that that to me is a, it's super important if you're going to be doing LinkedIn ads, Facebook ads, most likely Google ads as well. It gives you more legitimacy for your ad. Otherwise, otherwise it could be looked at as, as, as a spamming or you know, you're just taking people elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, Google has no, well, it does because it crawls your website. But uh, it, but that, for, as far as uh, those things are concerned, they're seeing that this is a very, a, a, a lot more realistic. A lot, a, a, so do they crawl, does Google crawl? these pages as well, like the landing pages that are- It like does redirects. not crawl this, but it will go to my website and it will see this redirect on my website. So that it will see it on my website and, and that it's going in. Because you put a link to that uh -huh. landing page on your website as well? No, I actually create a, a redirect. So right. I'll, I'll go, and actually that, that's a WordPress. Right, thing. so does it crawl the redirect? Uh, I believe it does. And, uh, and, and then what I do is I get, that redirect to LMG one, and I connect it to that page right there. So I'm going to actually go ahead and copy. And again, this is going to a, a little bit be a little extra with my hand. Um, uh, so, are, is your website a WordPress website? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you may need to see how to. Well, okay. Well, it, well, it actually does not. This one is actually on SiteGround. Um, this, this is a place that I host my stuff. And what, what I end up doing is I, I just go uh, here on the websites. Um, now, uh, how I do everything on, on uh, SiteGround is uh, my, this is my main site, kevinadunlap.com. And then everything else is, uh, I forget what it's called, um, but it's all associated with that. That's why you will see here, um, oh, for Optimal Form, Forms Academy, you see the hosting plan is that. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go to my site, uh, site tools. And then I can go to domain and DNS um, zone editor. So what I would, in this particular case, what I would do, and I would look for LMG1. Okay, so LMG1 is one. I think this is one of my first ones. This one's so far down. There it is. So uh, if I were to go here and I'm going to hit the edit button, well, actually, LMG1, I'm saying it's going to pages.infusionsoft.net, and then because it's going to the landing page, it's going to my, my account, um, if, keep an infusionsoft on the same that company. Um, so here it's, it's going here, and it's going to see that LMG1 is now connected to the, uh, to the URL, to the um, landing page URL. So how does it know LNG1 is? Because, uh, if I'm back in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, so you had it in there, yeah. So if I were to go and say, and create a, a, another landing page, I would just go here first, and this is not when I do it, to say LNG4, and you know, whatever, whatever I want to call it doesn't really matter. And then I'll just, uh, I'll add it in, and then when I use LNG4, and I can uh, now, um, I would now hit, just hit the connect button, and then it will, I'll put the two together. Now that's how you use, that, those are the subdomains. The redirects is a WordPress thing. Um, and I'm, and if, you, if you don't know how to do, um, if you can't, now who do you use for your hosting company? GoDaddy. Okay, GoDaddy. I'm, I'm most positive GoDaddy has, uh, has, that, has this ability. So you don't have to worry about trying to do redirects. Because redirects is a plugin that I use. Uh, oh, okay. Um, those up there, those three up there are all uh, redirects. The LMG1 dot, that's the subdomain. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, so in the process, whenever you are, uh, let me see here. So, 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, hit, go ahead and say done on this one. And what we're going to do is I'm gonna go open up one of the other landing pages. So this one, that one inside of LMG2, this one is still a fairly short uh, landing page uh, in and of itself. So this one here is, um, in this particular case, the only difference between the, 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 the last one and this one, even though the cover is back, is, is different, is that this is actually buying it at full price. But well, the last one is going to be buying it at a reduced rate. Because you go to the lead magnet and then you're going to um, this. Now, I can have where, because um, when I have my one program, um, as you will see, I have I can have all my landing pages here in one series. Mm -hmm. the, as you see, these are not connected to anything. The top one here is going to be connected to this uh, uh, to this uh, rectangle. Inside that rectangle is where I'm going to have it's going to run at any time. You know, I can do delays like hey, get this now and, and you will get this t uh, tomorrow for whatever reason you're doing a 24 hour delay. Um, I, and this is where I'm, uh, where I'm applying the tags. Uh, this one there, and then this is going to be the actual email that they're going to, uh, that they're actually going to be getting. So this, so this is the email to get the lead magnet. But on the screen, in, in the LMG one's case, um, they're going to another landing page. So, so two different processes are going on at the same time. So, like you talked about, the picking the ideal customer running the Facebook ad, the lead page, the landing page, like the flow, right? Probably like nurture campaign and stuff like that. It kind of is. Um, which one do you tweak? Like once you build everything out, right? You've got to have the whole pipeline, mm -hmm. but at the very end is like conversions, right? So how do you, where do you, like, cause you can spend weeks and days and months building landing pages mm -hmm. that aren't converting, or it could be the Facebook ad that isn't getting people to the landing page. That isn't well, that's, and, and that's where you're gonna have to look at your numbers. Um, that's why, like say, in, in this particular case, I have a landing page that's going to do a, uh, a full price funnel, and then it's also going to a, I think this one says a reduced price funnel. Um, so in this particular case, this landing page is going to be is going to be redirected to this landing page, which is going to be redirected to, uh, to that landing page. So it's going to be it's three landing pages in this process, and two of these landing pages are going to have checkout forms. So there's going to be a checkout form in between here and also here. Um, so the the first checkout form after they after they buy, because then you will see the energy credit card information, put that in, and then they're going to once they hit uh, submit, they're going to land on this landing on, on the second landing page or third landing page. To buy something else, mm -hmm. um, and, and you can have this continuing going on forever and ever and ever. Now, I mean, obviously, you know, after you, after they buy from you uh, twice, three times, you know, that's kind of getting you know, redundant. Your, your your closing ratios are going to be really, really low. Um, what you can do, well, so what you're doing, like for an example, if you're running a Facebook ad, let's say you put an ad on, let's say you're running it for twenty bucks a day, you know, whatever it is, and you see that it had like. Uh, so many thousand uh, impressions. And then you have uh, 20, say, say you have 100 clicks. So, you, so you've got 100 clicks that are clicking on your ad, now they're landing on your landing page. Now how many people filled out your form? So if they, they, if they went to this free lead magnet, let's say 10% filled out the form, that means now you've got 10 going on there. So for you, if you look at uh, like, okay, if I've got 100, uh, 2,000 impressions, 100 clicks, and 10 people converted, Okay, now where, where's my issue? Is 10% an okay value for you? If it's not, like, okay, either I gotta you know, make the ads more attractive to get more people coming in so I can still keep that same 10% ratio, or I gotta uh, 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 improve my landing page so I, can, I increase the percentage. So, yeah, and so, how do you deal with that situation? Because yeah, you could just say, well, if it's 10, assuming the 10 is static, I'm gonna spend double, and I'm gonna get 20 at the end of the month. You would, you would think, yeah, you would think that. Or do you say, oh, I'm gonna redo my my ad, 
Or do I redo the landing page? Like the well, that's all part of your beta, uh, your beta testing. Because then you go and change the ad. So you keep one ad running, and then in the same same campaign, you get a second ad running. So now it's say they're splitting between 50 50 between the two. And now, uh, and if they're going to the same landing page, now you're going to look at which which ad is, is a, it has a better um, attraction ratio. Now it's oh, ad number two is a lot better than one. one uh, ad number one was a picture. Ad number two was a 30 second video. Which one is you know, which one is converting better? And then when they're going to your landing page, you may add a feature sometimes it's like, hey, they're either land on this landing page or they're gonna land on this landing page. One is a long form, one is a short form, so I'm gonna test which one works. Okay, now my short form, in the future, I'm gonna do one that has a picture, one that has a video, which one converts. So it's, it's a constant testing. And that is by far the most maddening <laughs> aspect of this whole thing is, you know, trying to test as to what works for you. And what's a good time for like is testing a week, a month? I would say at least budget? a week because uh, you want to you want to see what the numbers show. Like I started, I put a uh, a poll on LinkedIn two days ago, and it was basically uh, if you see an event that you like that is, happens to be a local, an education based event, do you prefer to go do it on a Zoom call or do you prefer to go do it on at a live meeting? Basically, I'm testing this. I'm literally I'm testing this uh, this thing right here. I should I should I actually move this more to a Zoom conference rather than in person? Well, I'm, I've been running this for what five weeks now, so it's, it's still relatively new. Um, but you know, I just want to see uh, because I, you know, I'll, I'll go online, uh, say on a line or Facebook, and say hey, a Zoom call. I uh, said so you see 44 people thumbs up or 30 people registered, you know, under, whatever those numbers are, versus how many people are showing up to live events. And so that's uh, that's what I'm testing. I'm like, no wishes, but but I, I'm living it run for a week. So I looked at it last night, and I'll probably look at it again tomorrow, uh, tonight or tomorrow night, because it's it's just too it's too short of a time frame. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if you're thinking of going Facebook ads, um, it's called I think it's called the, the Meta Team. You can get a, an ad, not a free like ad. I don't call it a coach, but somebody that works for, for the thing that would say how, how, how you could be, and it's just to look at what you, what you should be doing. I had a guy, same name, same name as myself, um, and, uh, Kevin on there, and I talked with him probably for about a month. You know, just trying to, you know, on my head, like one of the things he says is keep your video short for less than 20 seconds. And like, that's what the highest high conversions are. He also uh, mentioned that Monday and Tuesdays are the worst days to run ads. So, okay, so it's avoid Monday and Tuesdays. Or instead of, Doing it um, per week, you know, per day, like twenty dollars per day. Is instead of doing that for the for, for two weeks and spending four hundred dollars, I'll spend the same four hundred dollars and say that's the lifetime of the ad. So then Facebook determines where uh, what is when's the best time and places for your ads to be running. Mm -hmm. So so now all of my ads now that I'm running Facebook are lifetime instead of per day, even though the budget may be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and again, it's all testing. It's like, you know, because your industry is different from mine. Mm -hmm. So, what works for me may not work for you. Um, yeah. But the mechanisms should work, right? Like the process should work, the system and process should work. The process, Even though yes. the ad and the copy and what's in the, the landing page and all that. Correct. And, um, and, yeah, yeah. Now, um, what, now one, one of the things, I'm, I'm going to go inside the second landing page. So whenever you're, you're building your process, you have to look at every step along the way. What, what, uh, you always have to look at it from the, the customer's experience. So it's going to be like, okay, if they're here now and they decided, as you can see, I'm only collecting email. I, I, I don't want their first name. I get their first name when they make a purchase. Yeah, I, I don't really care for their first name at, at this early stage. I'm not getting sure why that in a moment. Um, so in this particular case, you can see right now they're going to go through this thing here. It's called a checkout form. Okay, so in, so in this case, once they enter this, uh, their next step is that checkout form. And then, uh, and then uh, now with you or if you're selling stuff that is online, uh, this checkout form could be uh, part of your CRM, which is like mine. Or it could be part of a, you know, your credit card processing company, and they're going through that, and you have to understand how that how that works with your mm -hmm. with your CRM. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to back out of this. Let me change.
And in this case, they're buying the lead magnet generator at full price, uh, which is one of my programs. That's what LMG stands for. So I'm selling it from 197, I'm also selling it for 37. So, so if I'm having them go through my lead magnet, I may have them go directly through the 37 at the reduced price. And this is only good for one more hour, or you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so in this particular case, I'm gonna have them go into the, uh, the full price version. So one thing that Keep does not have, at least at the level that I have, it does not have uh, coupon codes. Like, you know, Stripe has coupon codes. I'm pretty sure Rudolph PayPal does too. So if you're, if you're using uh, coupon codes, then if you're and you're using Keep, you'll have to go through there uh, to use those coupon codes. Which, you know, which is fine. So I'm selling this for $197, and I can change the price uh, if I want to inside here. Even though this is the full price, I, I'm gonna go ahead and change it for a moment. And instead, just make it $19. You'll see it's $19 up there. Um, so I, I can't, even though the, the, this is the normal full price, I can change that at any time. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's great you know, if you're having these checkout forms or you have more than one. Okay. And then we're locked, turn it on. Yeah. So we'll go to 197. I'm going to go next. And the, the only thing I'm putting in here is what are they, so the, the actual product you're getting. So I could do a bundle of products and I have stuff in there as well. Um, in this case, I'm going to hit the next button. Um, the form name is lead magnet generator. I could call it LMG1. I could then call it whatever I want to. Usually I would do LMG dash full. So get the full price. And then that's the headline that's going to appear on top of the um, form up here. Actually, yeah. Actually, right there. That's, that's where it's going to appear. It's right there. Okay. So if I were to go ahead and take the R off. <laughs> So I, I prefer to keep the name of the thing that they're buying as part of the, because this is part of the checkout process, the receipt, in a way. And then here, one of my colors, I have two primary colors. I use the hex code, that's just one of mine. I use purple and gold. Uh, A426B9 is not purple, and I call badass, the gold one is BBAD55. So. <laughs> they're basically that's the color of the button. Now I can change the background too, It'll be all white, and then the text could be all white. Now this is where the, the automations that, that they will get, so this is how the products are going to be released. I'm having the products released inside the, uh, of, uh, the email sequence instead of being part of the checkout form in this particular case. And this is where I, uh, uh, so now here I can go ahead and copy the link. Now if I were to scroll up, I can have them go to the default thank you page and this is the end of the process, or they're gonna to go to another uh, another URL, which would be this next landing page. So, so you have, so that's how you go from pay for something instead of just being done, this can go right into a, another step in your process. So that's that's the one thing I just wanted to point out was that one specific thing there. And so that's, so, so that is the, um, the landing page. Now, when somebody's going to your landing page and they're buying something, just for proper terminology, that is known as a sales page, not a landing page. But I mean, you can use them interchangeably. However, the sales page is when a sale is occurring. The short form landing page, again, is the, is the squeeze page, because I already have that very, very little information. And then the long form is going to be the one that gives them a whole bunch of, uh, of different things. Um, so I want to show you an example of a landing page that's long form. I'm sure you've probably seen them. Now, the sequence you see up there on the wall there for the roadmap, the RM, that's all done, uh, is being done right here. So you're talking about webinars. Now, this is a webinar sequence. So essentially, what, this looks a lot more uh, complicated, but what I was doing when I was doing my roadmap seminar is that I would have to go to a long form and a short form. I was testing them, RM2, RM3. And that's just me, that's, that, that's the label that I use because I'm very, 
I had a little pool, so I was trying to hide which one is which one, so I was going to make a change. And I also have, um, um, there's a roadmap right now. Now this is where they're landing on the web page, on the landing page, and the, and the video is right there. I'm not even asking for anything. I mean, you just kind of do it right there, because I, so I was testing which one, which one works better. Now I can see what the conversions are, and I also have here, what if they were to get a replay, and they're going to be redirected somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, so where does the conversion show up? Um, well, I, what's that? The reporting. Now this is from the last two days, so I'm not, I should have zeros in, uh, in here. Um, so I, I can minimize that, and then they can show my reporting right there. So, so in this case, now this doesn't count how many people land on the page, because I'm, uh, but it does count how many people took an action from the page, like you know they put in their email, you know whatever. So, and that's where, where my uh, disconnect was for a little while. I was like, hey, I'm looking at this. Like, this ad was running an ad, and for these last two days, the 12th and the 13th, and I'm getting, so I had 100 people that clicked on the ad, and I see one here. <laughs> Like okay, that means I'm this, that to me shows I'm converting only one out of those one hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's so that's like okay. So I so now to me it's the landing page isn't working. Now, um, if the landing page isn't working, then obviously I need to go and do something or create a second landing page and have to go to that one or split test and have to go to uh, uh, different ones. That way I can start seeing you know, which one which one is converting or not. And that's how you do it today. Now, when I first started doing so did you change, like, did it work? Did you change the landing page? And I, that's why I was still, I was testing between the long form and the short form. That's, that's why I looked at those right there. As you can see, the, the next step in both of these sequences is going through here. Mm -hmm. Now, this was just registering for a webinar. So this one here, the long form, um, was registering for a webinar that was, uh, where they had four choices to make. Like pick uh, set Friday at noon, Friday at two, Saturday at noon, Saturday at two, or whatever the times that I had. So you won't see this here. You won't see this here because um, this is not the actual uh, page. Actually, let me go see that we'll do it. So, so this this is the actual landing page here, and then uh, this is what it actually looks like in real life. So here I was going to say uh, pick a, um, in this case, just pick between Saturday, uh, two times on Saturday, and then replay. Now this has been I've done this in over a month, but you can see uh, this I guess that's that's what's going to be happening to them. So in this case, I was like, you know, you know which which works which works better for you. Now. Uh, since I lived in Las Vegas for so many years, I usually put the Pacific time first, but I always put Pacific and Eastern time if you're doing a webinar, because you never know where they're going to be coming from. Um, so don't assume that they know how to um, do the conversion. And another thing that I've learned is don't use EST, EDT for your time zones, because not a lot of people don't understand the difference between daylight saving, day saving time and standard time. Because I've been to people before, well, I, I put this at, uh, at, at one o'clock uh, EST, and we're in EDT. So, do you mean one o'clock EST, or do you mean <laughs> twelve o'clock EST? Yeah. So, like, so I always put Eastern or ET or whatever. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so, so in this particular sequence, they were just going to be putting in their email, and then they were going to the sequence of when they're going to get notified, notified as, as when the webinar is coming. So they're, be, they're getting a tailor-made email sequence. Now. As far as um, as landing pages go, um, I've worked with. Uh, who's your email tool? Who do you use your email tool? Outlook. Oh, oh, I mean for your um, email service provider, like Mailchimp or. You, oh, you, for like outbound emails. Yeah, it's through HubSpot. HubSpot. Okay. Um, I don't know how HubSpot does it. Um, I'm assuming HubSpot has a landing page program, at least in their in their paid version. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah. Okay. Um, Now, does HubSpot have a platform for uh, webinars, or do you have to use like Zoom or Google? Yeah, different one. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, uh, Zoom, uh, there's this I paid version, and and I'm starting to see more people using Google Meet, so I don't know pretty much anything about Google Meet, and I like the duration and number of people that can be on it. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm going to start testing it out. I, I can let you know that at a later time. But if you're uh, looking at uh, landing pages, there's websites like uh, ClickFunnels, which is perfect for those if you're looking to do um, um, countdown things, uh, uh, countdown timers and things like that. How rate can be a little expensive at $127 a month. Um, I have used them in the past, that was a few years ago. Um, there, there's also one called uh, leadpages.com, that's another uh, one that you can use. Most of these do come with a free trial. Um, I've just I've been hearing a little bit about Unbounce as another landing page. But you said HubSpot, so let's look at that. So I'd like for you to, I, mean, I know we're here by ourselves today. Um, to possibly start looking at your, uh, you know, creating, start creating funnels for yourself. Um, okay, so it has a, so you can sell stuff through um, the HubSpot as well, or at least have you checked out forms? Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you, how, how do you feel about that? Let me ask you this then. Um, are they, are, is HubSpot the one that pays you or is, are they going through another party like Stripe or PayPal? Um, I think the payment goes through HubSpot. So they're the ones that's sending you a check to your, or send yeah, you they deposit deposits. it to the bank account. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, the more things you can have under one hat, the better, in, in my opinion. We start having to do integrations like through Zap and things like that. Now you've got things that's going to start breaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's better to have everything through one house and just be done with it. That's, that's the reason I'm with Keep because I got the landing pages, the CRMs, the email uh, campaigns, the autoresponder, my scheduling program, everything is, uh, is through Keep. So, so that's, that's, just, that's just for me. Um, so what are some of the things that you could be or would be wanting to sell or have for your landing page? So we kind of build out a process for you. Yeah, so I mean, we've built our, our agent, our home services. Okay. Like they can order services through your? No, so we sell to the home service provider. So if the home service provider can't get to the phone, it'll route to our system, we'll answer the call for them. Okay essentially send them to a landing page where we can grab information or text back and forth with them, kind of conversationally. Now, in those particular cases, does it have to be a landing page or could it just be a website? Because a landing page is based on one call to action it's for them to put in their information to, I mean, I, I, I guess it could be either, but um, uh, so what kind of information are you asking for on the, on the landing page then? First name, last name, description, photos. Um, okay. And, and HubSpot does all that? I mean, um, so yes. we do that for our customers. Okay. So we're B2B. We sell to like handymen, electricians, plumbers, roofers. Okay. Now, because uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, you know, well, you know, for your landing page process or your conversion process, um, what are you looking for? Because you're talking about doing Facebook ads, but Facebook ads is more for, um, Consumer to business or business to consumer. See. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking for a business owner that is on Facebook that wants to get time back on the weekends and not have to answer the phone on the weekends. Okay. So that's what my ad, right, would look like. Now, have you looked at doing ads on LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, um, if they're coming to you for that, you know, you know, could you kind of walk me through the process that this consumer would, uh, would go through your your, your, your sales process over your funnel. So the, the consumer being- The person you're advertising. That, I, that I'm selling to. Correct. Yeah, so they come in, they fill out a form, they hit our landing page, right? They, they see the ad, they get to our landing page, they fill it out, we call them back, we run them through a demo. They, if they like it, they sign up, and we go to onboarding, do an onboarding meeting, and okay. then we deploy it. Now, have you thought about using uh, like a scheduling program, or have you already like Calendly? Calendly, yeah, yeah, that's what we use. Okay, so they're going there, putting their information, then they're scheduling a time that fits on your schedule, 
Maybe you have a 30 minute consultation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because that's kind of what I do as well with the strategy sessions. Mm -hmm. Is is exactly that is because they, they go buy something from me. So well, let's go this and set up one on one call. Talk about your business yeah. and, and, and scheduling in. And once they once they hit the enter button, I get a sudden text message on my phone, and it's like, oh, okay, I got I got a call at two o'clock later. Yeah. So our <laughs> whole process is is based around getting them to the demo, right, and getting them booked on a demo. So uh, all of our marketing, all of our sales activity is get people in front of the demo, and then run demos all day and then we have our conversion rate off the demo so we just sign them up right they like well, it. what is your, what's your average conversion rate now I like in the 30s 30 percent yeah okay okay so if you're reverse engineering um and you're assuming 30 you just got to get more people calling we got to get people in the demos oh, yeah correct okay and so to get people to the demos it could be digital through landing pages and they could self sign up for it or outbound marketing or insight. So what uh, what main problem uh, do they have that you can, I mean, I, mean, I, can, uh, I can kind of understand the years are a lot different because you're dealing with a lot of different factors of a house. But uh, it's like, I'm trying to think of it, like, what are some things that they have that you could? A service pro. Yeah. They're busy and they're, they can't enjoy their weekends. They spend too much time. on the phones, they lose calls, they lose customers because they can't get back to them in time. So a plumber, phone call rings, it's a customer, they don't answer, the customer goes to the next person. Now, have you met uh, uh, this Japanese uh, guy, Gary, or uh, um, yeah. Apple Box? Yeah. For, for, uh, for he's a videographer? Yeah, yeah. Have you, I, mean, I don't know, have you done? Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. yeah, we did some videos with him. Okay. And what are you doing with those videos? <laughs> so I was gonna recommend him. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put them out on LinkedIn. Yeah, they're like customer testimonials. Okay. Now, do you have any videos or any thoughts? Because a lot of most people buy because they are wanting to get away from a pain rather than move toward a pleasure. Those are the two reasons that why people buy. Um, so if their pain is you know not having enough time, um, because you, I'm sure you watch regular TV commercials like you know people are like oh. <laughs> I've never thought of like years, whatever. And they call us. So I, I don't know, have you shot any videos like that or? Not like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how can you address their pain? And then, because um, the, one of the projects, a lot of stuff that I'm doing up here is that you create something known as a lead magnet, which is something that you are going to give away for free. Yeah, I mean, the, your demo is, is definitely one of your lead magnets. But is there something else that could... Yeah, we can give away a free agent. A free basis agent for them. Okay. Now, when they sign up to you, is this like a membership site or is this just... A subscription, that's a month of subscription. Okay. And do you, I'm assuming there's a trial period or... Well, I guess not because they're doing repairs. Yeah, there's no trial for these sign up. I don't know what to say about that. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to address that one because yours is a little bit more unique. It's B, yeah, it's B to B. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, how long are we doing this? And this is your business, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think what we're finding is like smaller, like mom and pop companies like under five employees behave more like consumers right they're on Facebook they're scrolling they're looking at their feed like mm -hmm. like like a typical B2C sale for like bigger companies franchise owners presidents of companies like CEOs of their like larger multi-unit multi-location then they're more like on LinkedIn less like scrolling through Facebook and more looking at like you know strategy articles and things like that on LinkedIn so we've kind of segmented the two markets out we service both of them um, so we've kind of segmented those out now is there anything that you could like a report or anything like that you can give away that would that could be something sure. that could be compelling 
for them oh, to yeah. get more information. Because yeah. that could be that could be like a, a good lead magnet that uh, you go to a landing page to get that lead magnet, and then that would take them to a second landing page, which would be your um, uh, landing page that would be talking about your hey, schedule a demonstration here. So that way you, you add an extra step in the process, but then they're still getting something of uh, something of value. So you're adding an extra step and just testing it out to see, you know, you know it, does that does that work? Because mm -hmm. I mean, if, if if you get higher conversion by bypassing that step, then obviously you just scrap that one. But if, if they're getting higher conversion, then because now you have like, gosh, here's the here's the report on the, the, one of the things that can go wrong with my house, or you know, if I don't go to this, I don't know, go to the theater with my kids, you know, whatever it is that you know, whatever the pain that you're solving, um, that you can. Uh, I, I get away from them. Yeah, we've got like case studies from the different business owners. Okay. No, I mean something more than just a case. I mean something that's informative. It's, the case studies are will be a good part of something like that. Um, let me see here. Um, like, well, because like here's the problem. This is my long form, so that I can see. I, I can put. Uh, Case studies like that with with Daphne and Jim. Uh, oh, like testimonials. Testimonials uh, or case studies or you know, uh, I'm assuming. So, yeah, like our case study is something you download. It's like a one picture that just, oh, okay. this is the problem. This is the objective. This is how we solved it. These are the results. Okay. And this is the person that we like the business. How much money we saved them and how much time we saved them and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, because I was thinking something like, yeah, I mean, you know your industry better than I do. Um, something like, you know, you know, one of the things that one of the problems that you solve, I say, you know, plumbing, you know, whatever it happens to be, you can say you can do all of this, I'll do all of that. This will take you all this amount of time, or you can just, you know, so something that you know, that they can. Yeah. So is that message in the Facebook ad? Is that message in the landing page? I would say that message is probably be on the message? landing page in the Facebook ad or LinkedIn ad could hit at that. Can we see like one of your Facebook ad? Oh, I, that's next week. <laughs> well, we can, I mean, I, I'm not running any ads at the, at the moment. Um, cause I'm having to run ads and, uh, cause I'm, I'm re, re looking how I want to do things. But yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, and you're going to cover that next week. So. Uh, cause you can see all my ads are turned off right now. Uh, roadmap. This is the roadmap was the one that I was doing, but the birthday bun was when I was running for fe uh, February because my birthday was in February. Uh, so I was, uh, 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 and I spent like 150. Exam. I'm doing. I'm doing lifetimes now instead of dailies. Let me see how that that yeah. Um. So, uh, but uh, as far as I say, uh, ads go. Let me see. So uh, inside here, I'm now I'm in the ad campaign. So this is the robot lead magnet and then going directly to the bottom. So I was testing two different things out. And then um, then I'm running uh, for this, for the, uh, the, for the, the uh, direct bundle, I was running three different ads. And then on, on the lead magnet, I was running two different ads. All of them are under the one same uh, ad campaign uh, of my budget. So, so therefore, I, I was looking And all at, those went to a landing page. All went to different landing pages. And so, what was the messaging on that ad? Um, this was it a case, video? Was it a picture? Uh, well, the, I, three of them had a, 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 a video ads, and I had three different headings as well. So, I was also testing headings as well. So, it was always kind of testing. Had more than one. Had more than one at any one time going on. Uh, so, let me just go to H three, and that's me in the office. Uh, that's the that's the video name there, um, and then. I'm going on Facebook and Instagram, and in this case, I'm doing a simple image. Now, I could have it uh, rotating between uh, up to five videos uh, for for each ad, so I so can have it rotate. Then I look at now if I did that, I usually change the title a little bit. So therefore, when I'm looking at the uh, at the analytics, I can say, okay, this one is performing better than that one. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're looking at that, small deviations are not pretty conclusive, in, in my opinion, but. Um, Um, so we had 10 placements, 7 and, and 3 of them there. 
Um, there, there was my ad copy. Now I, I learned about a month or so ago to add color to your uh, ad copy. So I, you know, I put all these emojis in there. Now there, again, this is probably going to be covered next week, but I do have this website. You can take a picture of it if you want to. It's called Peely, uh, Peely, P-I-L-I, A-P-P, dot com, forward slash Facebook, dash symbols. And because when I'm running it, when I'm uh, doing my ads, I'm, I'll, I'll be there so we can get it, uh, copy it down and save it. Uh, when I'm running my ads, uh, I actually write everything in Word, Microsoft Word. And I'll put these symbols into Microsoft Word. So I want to get the, any misspellings, bad grammar, or something like that uh, from Word. I also, I do have Grammarly, let me see it right there. Mm -hmm. I have Grammarly as one of my Chrome extensions. So it catches other uh, vocabulary things. So you always, and, and sometimes Word and Grammarly will contradict each other, or they'll, one will catch things and the other one won't. So it's always going to have a double one on there. And so I'll write it all in Word, and then I just copy paste it over. So it's personal credit created. And so this is where I was selling basically all of my programs. And yeah, so is the value of that that you have a lot of content in there that'll match? Like you're putting on Well, this was the selling out of all my courses for a discount. So this is maybe not be the best one to be looking at because it's kind of atypical. And how many of those, like how many people hit the landing page? Um, this was when, I don't remember when I was running this. I had, it, was, it was in February, so. Um, so let me go back to, you got that website, right? Yeah. Reports. I'm going to go out and add. I'm going to run it for. I say Valentine's Day through the 28th. I'm going to ask for the age and the gender. Now I can do other metrics as well. Um, like you know, I, one of the ones you can look at is what's called cards. Which the actual ad, the ad uh, uh, headline that you use. Um, I can go to that one in there. I guess. Yeah, that's the, the carousel card right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, export. I'm going to, uh, I always use a CSV, which is you know, a spreadsheet. You know what CSV stands for, right? Commas of greater value. Therefore, if you've got 17,000, it's not going to have any commas there because that was really awesome. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's a report there. And now remember this is the only hundred and fifty dollar ad that I was running at the time. For the course of two weeks, like ten bucks a day, twelve bucks a day. Yeah, so if you I mean if you sell one course, it pays for itself. Okay, I don't know why I got zero in the results. Let me go back and run it again. I think it was the I think the carousel card messed it up. It may have. Uncheck that. Yeah. No. Uncheck. Yeah, so how many courses did you sell? Um, not that many. I, I did get good results. So that's, why, that's one of the reasons I'm not really doing much on Facebook ads at this moment in time. Um, I'm looking more, because I've never really been very active on LinkedIn, because here's here are my numbers right there. Um, but, um, yeah, really and that's kind of what I'm trying to get at, is like, okay, so is this successful? Because it made all those impressions, even well, though, or, or is some, like, where is the problem if you didn't sell as many, like, courses as you expected? Right? Is it the landing page or is it? It's, to me, it was because uh, if I had, if I looked at my numbers and I saw how many people actually went to the landing page and then went through the checkout, you know, went through the checkout process, that you know, I, I know that's my conversion rate. Now I, I, I look at here the Facebook results and they would say I've got so many, uh, so many clicks. Yeah, you know, my company person, they don't got my clicks. Then I'm, not, I'm looking at those numbers. Now what I've been told, normally what I do in this is I'll, I'll go ahead and get rid of some of this data. So all, they're all going to be link clicks, so I don't, I don't need all of that data.
when I was first running these, um, you can see the ad set name right there. Director Bundle and then uh, Roadmap. Uh, uh, so those are my, the, those are the two that I was, uh, that I, that I was running. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit sort. Um, in this case, I'm gonna hit M. Um, and clicks. And gonna put size largest to smallest, so I'll put that one on top. And then I'm going to, you know, what other characteristics would you say would be interesting? Normally I would say, I would add another level and I'm gonna sort it by age in this particular case. And then, actually no, I'm gonna do it by um, B. And then I'll do it by A. Person, excuse me. So this is all my data. Um, going all the way down. So basically anything below here. It's pretty much irrelevant. There, there are no clicks. There's there are no activity on that. Um, so in this particular case, I'm looking at that these the these top three here were probably my or, or the best ones. All of them were director bundles and they were all 65 people uh, eight people that were 65 and older. <laughs> That's my data set. <laughs> now, when I started running ads, I was including like 30 year old and plus, and I was realizing my my younger uh, demographics was almost zero. I'm like, okay, so I know why am I wasting time putting uh, impressions onto pages or onto people's uh, Facebook pages that are not that I'm looking at. So let me change my. So by looking at this, I can now start that I can start adjusting my ads based upon this. Now, if I realize that, hey, look, it was H1, H1, H2, the headline, uh, uh, headline one, headline one, uh, were, my, uh, were my top two, you'll see that uh, male, female, there are about five different between, uh, as far as the gender is concerned. Um, then I'm, I'm looking at, okay, so maybe I should change my ad to be, you know, maybe I, I should have one ad that's going to only do 65 in order. What, you know, what are their pains? So now I'm sh sh I'm shifting my ad sets around, and then possibly even my landing uh, landing pages around to fit that data. So th that's, this is why, like you know, this stuff is so important. Now, if I if I'm looking at this here, and I'm going to just highlight down to there where it says fifth, actually all the double digits. Do I do do I see that the road, the RM lead magnet? Is that, a, is that a big uh, converter? Or at least for people to go to the website, to go to the landing page. You see it there, you see it there, one, two, five out of 11, or excuse me, out of uh, 15, um, went to uh, the, the roadmap. Most of them, the highest one was this right there, that was number seven, mm -hmm. at 20. And that was females, 65 and older. But what if that one converts? If that one converts, then, then because I, I would- That's only it. telling you the impression. Like you could have a lot of people that click, but they're, they don't convert. Correct. And that's where you have to look at, you know, which landing page are they going to? That's why, for my case, I have multiple landing pages. I mean, there's times when, uh, you know, when I'm just starting a whole new ad out, I will have one landing page, and this is called two, both of them are short form landing pages. Or maybe this link here is one that's going to short form, one that's going to long form. No. And then I'm looking, at, so I was like, which one works? I mean, when you start getting heavy into your uh, into your beta testing, it's going to be: should I use a red button or a blue button? I mean, it's, it, it can get that detailed. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's this is not um, an easy process. And there's a lot of testing that has to go on, and it, and the fact that you're doing a lot of the testing is where it gets a lot of frustration. <laughs> And the thing is, you can't like, let me change this and see what happens in the next two hours. Like, no, you can let it run for like a week. Because <laughs> you have to get the, the data has to come in. Mm -hmm. Just because you change it on, on a Monday at 3 o'clock or 3.30 in the afternoon, and you're looking at your data at 7 o'clock in the morning, and your ad set covers the entire United States, or, or, or just say Wake County, um, you know, what, you know, what's, you know, you know, what is your data showing? Now, there are, when you're running your, your stats, because uh, a lot of my stuff, like I said, for the, this video ads, um, let, me, let me go, no, I don't want to go that way. Let's 
So in that case, it was the same video that you had three different headlines. Uh, no, it was three uh, slightly different videos. Oh, okay. And so when I was looking at this, and I saw that video one is converting more, I, mean, I went there and said, are, it's like, you know, talking about starting a business, are you retired? And then for a second, I was like, I'm deliberately made after $65. Mm -hmm. And then I made a landing page that was geared towards $65 and order. So, if, you know, and again, this is getting into next week's, but like for something like you're doing, like, um, like you have even have one whole landing page just for one, one whole landing page just for uh, uh, electric. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to that landing page, um, like if you're giving them a lead back, like, you know, the basics of, uh, of indoor plumbing or, you know, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, they can get that as like, or is this too, or is this just too much work for you? Why don't you hire a professional? Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the content could be almost the, the same on the landing page, but it's geared toward each one. For an example, I had a coach of mine this last year talking about now if I'm going to be running these Facebook ads, I can go and create a lead magnet. As I said, it's a 10 page lead magnet. The only thing I change is the cover. One would say, Fresh, uh, let's say in my case, uh, uh, starting a business in Baltimore. Then the next week, starting a business in Las Vegas. And then uh, each landing page would be geared toward that one city. And the image on the front cover would be a picture of that city that I got off of, you know, that got online. Mm -hmm. And now they're, so now I'm, uh, I'm tailoring making my ad toward that one, that one uh, demographic in that one city. Like, I think here, let me see, birthday bundle. All right, let's scroll down. I want to focus on that one. Okay, there it is. For the uh, this is the roadmap one. I was I was doing both the United States and Canada. There's times I would just pick certain cities. If I wanted if I was going to say, "Hey, come to this meetup thing." I'm not, I'm only be hitting Raleigh and Durham. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be hitting Charlotte and South Carolina. It's, I mean, you can't come to an event. Why, why would I have to look at? Mm -hmm. So, and, and you can see, and for me, uh, for all genders. Now I can, this is at the ad set level, so I can put this as male, and then this could be female. And then you're testing, uh, you're testing your stuff. Well, it's up to you. Well, I don't know why we're talking to you about Facebook, but it's up to you as far as um, how strict or how restrictive that you want your, your targeting uh, to be. Now, uh, Facebook used to have any ads, and I hadn't run, run until recently, I had not run uh, Facebook ads for a few years, but you can put things like their interest, like, hey, I'm interested in Tony Robbins, I'm interested in whatever. Mm -hmm. So I can I put that in there. 